we got this new uh, video clip. It emerged. Uh. It's, uh, you know what it is? It's the very first hands-on video with the iPhone 12. Yes. World's first iPhone 12 hands-on. Exclusive. Exclusive. And uh, this is a very big deal. All right, you're not going to want to miss it. Uh huh. One of the best hands on videos I've ever seen in my entire life. It was on uh, Good Morning America. Mm. You see, uh, I, can't, I can't get my hands on an iPhone so long as Tim's been there. Yeah. At least not before it's available to the public. Uh huh. Because they know better than that. They know. You got to get it on Good Morning America. You got to reach the masses. Yes. You got to tell people there's an iPhone with magnets that exist in the world. No disrespect, Good Morning America. I mean, they got to cover a lot of stuff. Yeah. No disrespect. Yeah. They got to cover, here's what happened in the, you know, here's what's going on in the country. And then they got to say, and there's a new iPhone. They cover a, a wide general audience. But this, you know? let's also not... Uh, get it twisted. Yes. <laughs> Apple knows what they're doing here. I, I, yeah. Nobody has a hands-on video, and then they do their very first hands-on with Good Morning America, who they know there's. I mean, there's not going to be. It's not a in in depth kind of a thing. It's no. gonna it's gonna be very superficial. Very the whole segment is five minutes, and half of it is the people on the one side asking questions. And laughing, and then the other person only gets the person who has the hands on with the phone uh, is only responding half of that time. So it's like a three minute thing. But those are the phones. She's got them. She's got the phones. Good morning, America. She had the two blue ones. She's got the oh, those are some those are some screen grabs. Yeah. <laughs> You're killing the okay, screen me, grabs uh, there. Let me go to this one here. You oh, okay? Yeah, she has the magnets. Yep. So she got the magnets. She got the regular iPhone 12, and she has the iPhone 12 Pro as well, I believe. Or is okay. it the Pro Max? It's uh, She's got two phones there that she shows off. I mean, you barely see the phones. It's mostly just her talking. They're like, is the camera any good? Is it really that much better? And then and then they, they ask about the magnets and everything else. But it is, I guess it counts. It is a hands-on video. There are hands, and the hands are on the iPhone. There it is. And it's the two different right blue there. colors as well. You have the... The really blue, she said Azure blue, mm -hmm. is what she called it on, a, on the iPhone 12 regular. And then you had the Pacific blue, which is more my style of blue, yeah. which was on the uh, on the Pro model because that's an exclusive color. And then they had a representative from Apple also on the, on the broadcast. Uh, you know what's funny? I watched this clip, Will, and immediately I thought to myself, oh, that's how they're going to sell iPhones, this holiday season the uh, magnet the very first thing she opened with 5g came down the road everything else came down the road cameras came down the road but she opens with yeah it's got a flashy magnet check out my wallet mm -hmm. and everybody's yeah which of course you were upset about when the first magnetic wallet thing started you were sitting there screaming and yelling saying i'm gonna lose my wallet whatever no 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 the general public they love magnets yes and you they can just you can put a magnet anywhere. And they say, that's, I like that. Innovation. Exactly. <laughs> you just slap a magnet. So it's funny, but as, as a demo is concerned, it's, a, it's quick and easy to understand. And it's a thing that your current device doesn't do. Yes. As good as the camera is, does the average person, are they able to discern as fast as, or, or, or whatever performance improvement, can the general public discern the difference? Right? Does it charge faster? Battery life? These things us enthusiasts care about, but the general public goes, does that have a magnet yeah. on it? And I can attach my wallet? Can I Is buy that... something else from Apple and then like and then slap them together? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm gonna spend a thousand dollars. Show yeah. me where to sign up. Now, it sounds like we're 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 having a laugh. Well, we are having a laugh. Uh. But at the same time, this is real stuff. You yeah. have to, as a business, uh, creating these smartphones, you got to come out here and say, we need something. we got to market this thing. Yeah. We need to compel people in a really weird time 
to purchase this thing, to spend a bunch of money, we need to have simple messages around what's new and different. And you know they're gonna have a flashy commercial with everything slapping together. Cha, 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 cha. You know how they do it, man? Yeah. It's a cha, cha. The, the sound and everything. And they it got gets, it exactly. It makes a real quick case for people to say, you know what? The time is now. I'll get all the bonus. I'll get the A14. I'll get the 5G. But really, I'm going to slap these things together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get a real kick out of it. So anyway, shout out Good Morning America. Congrats on the exclusive hands-on. Uh, just so you know, Tim, I'm still available. You want to go give hands-on number two? You just hit me up. Willie do. It's will at loulater.com. We're always available. Oh, yeah. For sure. 24-7. But I we're understand. You, Tim. I understand the Good Morning America choice. Uh, you got you got reach the general public, mm -hmm. and general public isn't here on Lou later yet. No. But this is the next Good Morning America right here. Yeah, we're working on it every day. Yeah, <laughs> we got a sponsor. You see, we're working on it. We got a sponsor. Okay. Today's sponsor is Express VPN. Uh, this is a way to protect yourself online. This is a way to open up access to content which is region locked. You can't reach it. All you do is you pop on this application. Express VPN, you click a couple buttons and and you're behind the VPN. You know, Will, you're sitting there at home, you're browsing, you're browsing the web. Guy like you. Mm. You understand this? I do that a lot. Yeah, you might do that. Mm. And I don't know, maybe you have Rogers, maybe you have Bell. Uh, you know, may, wherever you are in the world, you have your carrier for your home connection or your mobile connection. Mm. And, uh, you know, if they really want to, wanted to, they see exactly what you're up to. They do? Yeah, they do. Oh, no. Exactly. They see what you're up to. They love it. In fact, oh, they have boy. little parties. They get the popcorn out. They say, let's check oh, out. Let's no. see what Willie Doo's been up to. And they see all the weirdness. They see all those weird videos you watch. Yeah. Yes, they do. And uh, you, you, all you got to do, you got to remember to pop on your ExpressVPN. Look at that. The number one trusted VPN and your on online activity at that point, they can't witness it anymore. Oh, good. Not that, not that group. It's, uh, they create a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so your online activity can't be seen by anyone. And then, of course, there's the piece I like. If you got to connect to an open uh, Wi-Fi network, you know, you, you may be in a public Wi-Fi network. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can use the VPN in those circumstances. Or you can get access to the content, as I mentioned. So Netflix in a different region... Uh, BBC, if you're not in the UK, that BBC, I'm telling you, I, I've messed with it. Very restrictive because that's a public broadcast. They do some good content, though. Mm -hmm. And then you want to access it elsewhere. No, thank you. Mm. You pop on the UK VPN. Bingo. Prime Video, YouTube, ESPN, HBO, whatever it is. It may be have region issues. The VPN unlocks that for you as well. It, you, it works on all devices. is phones. Laptops, you can even install it on your router so everything goes through it if you like. And the whole thing happens fast. A, a ton of different locations to choose from. We use a VPN. You should use a VPN. And you get a deal right now. You get three months free by heading over to expressvpn.com slash Lou later. That is E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N. Mm. You see that I can spell as well. Dot com slash Lou later. Don't forget the Lou later part because then they know we sent you. Then you get the deal for the three months. Then you support this show and you put yourself behind the VPN protection when you're doing what Willie Do does when he's home. God knows what he's up to. So thank you, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN.com slash Lou later, three months free. All right, iPhone. We got more iPhone stuff because it's iPhone time. It's the iPhone time of year. Mm. It's a whole, it's its own holiday. Yeah. You know, you have all the other holidays, depending where you are in the world. iPhone gets, it gets like two weeks. It's like a two-week holiday uh -huh. where it's just all the tech news. You can't help it. It gets so much attention. It's, yeah. it's, it, it affects the entire marketplace. I was looking, man, I'm looking at the analytics on iPhone-related content yeah. that we posted. It's global. I'll tell you what, Will. Yeah. It's not one region. It's not two regions. Global. People want to know what Apple's up to, even if they don't want to buy the Apple product. They want to know what they're up to. And then once they're released, that's another. It's a whole cycle. another. It's another holiday. Yeah. I mean, they just they just do it big. They do it big. You saw the presentation. They mm -hmm. do it big. Anyway, iPhone 12. It's been a lot of noise. 
about nothing being included in the box. Apple here to save the world. Yeah. Apple here to ship you a slimmer box with nothing in it. No, no charge brick. No earbuds. We are going to... You still have to buy the new phone that you don't need. There's a yeah. lot of reaching there. I'm, I'm, re I'm reaching. This is a body language. Yeah. We're going to save the world by you buying a phone that you don't need. Mm -hmm. But we promise we're going to waste less than we did last time we convinced you to do this. Yeah. Same. It's very complex. It's very complex. It's simple in their minds. It's very complex. Because <laughs> you're marketing me a thing that you had to manufacture pulling components from the earth, sucking them out of the earth, and then I'm supposed to turn my labor into the purchase of said thing, which for sure wasn't free for anybody. Mm -hmm. But then I have the satisfaction of knowing I saved the planet. Well, that seems like a, that seems like a heck of a deal. Yeah. I want that deal. Yeah. I get to save the planet by buying things I don't need because those things that I'm buying are 70% less the volume than they were previously. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not... Will, give me a break, you know? I'm just a guy talking, but I understand it's it's people on both sides. I see people on Twitter saying, uh, you know, it's like having a meal mm. with no chopsticks. Mm. That's what I saw on Twitter. Mm. And it's a point to it. Yeah. There is a point there that it's kind of like, what is the user experience around the whole thing. Does it feel like the manufacturer went over and above? Did you have a luxurious experience or are you opening? Is it because there will be people, for sure there will be people that have not accounted for this. Mm -hmm. And there will be people, and then the other piece of it is how many people are just gonna buy the accessory charger anyways and then it's all the extra packaging there. Mm -hmm. Now you have a second item. Yeah. Now you need a bigger cardboard box. Now it's twice the amount of printing for whatever logo they put on the thing. So there's a lot of ways to slice this one. You can slice this one a lot of different ways. Yes. Uh, but it's complex. It's a complex pitch. I swear to you, it's not simple. It's not a one-to-one. -one. It's not just, oh, Apple saved a planet. No, it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. Because their whole mission is to persuade you to buy a thing that was extracted from the planet. Yep. Well, maybe this is like a trend. You you know that other manufacturers are gonna do the same thing, right? Yeah, they're all gonna do it. Look, I don't care. I got power bricks everywhere. You yeah. know? And and, and I, I'm sure there are people that are in that same position. They got power bricks everywhere. But I have to speak on behalf of the people who don't. And they didn't go with the universal standard. They didn't go with type C. It's still lightning. And now people need a very specific lightning to type C. Mm. And, and they need a very specific. And a lot of them are just going to buy the generic Apple branded power adapter. So let's be honest about that too. Mm -hmm. That a Apple's going to get into the line item. Let's just admit it. It's true. Mm -hmm. You know, both things can be true. Yes. Anyway. I apologize. I went a little too deep on that. The point, the whole point I was trying to make here is that in France, the iPhone 12 will actually come with ear pods inside the box. Hmm. Everywhere else, no ear pods. France, ear pods. Interesting. So they would have to change the packaging? That's right. Hmm. All for France, eh? Yeah. So in France, they're real worried about radiation. I know Jack worries about radiation too, he says. What am I doing? Am I dying? I say, absolutely. You're dying. Yes. And and then he kind of, there's a frown and he shrugs. And he asks me about 5G. He's convinced 5G is coming to get him. 5G is the boogeyman. And I tell him, man, you're holding that phone all day long anyway. Yeah. Whatever you got there. Mm -hmm. Well, in France, they're real worried about radiation to the point where they demand that a smartphone manufacturer would ship their device with a reliable headset so people wouldn't have to hold the phone to their face. Mm. So you have they at least have an option to limit face exposure to the smartphone. Pretty uh, pretty interesting thing here. French law now requires smartphones be bundled with hands-free kits or a headset in order to protect children 14 and younger from electromagnetic radiation. The government is not convinced that there are no long-term health problems associated with this. 
in France. Now, the other thing they're doing in France is they're not happy about the 5G like Jack. Huh. They're trying to de delay the deployment of 5G over health concerns and landscape blight. Blight? I don't know. Maybe it'll affect the, maybe the appearance. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So they're a bit apprehensive about the whole thing. And, and, and the funny thing here is that Apple has no choice in the matter. Go governments do, I guess, have that power. And presumably if they stipulated something similar, well, they tried, as you recall, they've tried on universal standards. They've had issues with lightning in the past, the connector, because they've been saying, I mean, this is the same company who's going to save you from all the waste who went out of their way to create proprietary connectors. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, if you're in France, you get a free headset. Don't know if you'll ever use it. You'll probably slap Bluetooth earbuds in and you're dead anyways. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> very negative here. <laughs> oh, man, it's funny. Anyway, you won't get those in any other countries. Yeah. All right, that 5G that you're scared of, you know who's not scared of it, Will? Chris Rock. Chris Rock loves the 5G. Does he? Yes. Oh. And this is the very first Verizon commercial advertising 5G on the brand new iPhone. They were ready to go. Verizon, they came out during a presentation. Verizon is excited about this new iPhone because yes. you know what happens? You get a faster connection, con consumption goes up. Mm -hmm. Who's billing you on that data? Mr. Verizon. Yeah, Mr. Verizon. And he's got the ultra wideband now, so he's billing you. You he, you got the faucet on blast. You turn the faucet all the way, both of them. You got two faucets. Yeah. You turn them all the way on. The water is flowing, and he's collecting. Mm -hmm. Mr. Verizon. Anyway, so as part of this commercial, of course, the the Apple people they go in and uh, carve out certain frames, and they were able to discover the the way that Verizon is going, going to identify true, real 5G on your iPhone. So you'll know if you're in a market, if you're really experiencing the full 5G thing and the way it's going to be identified is shown off in the image up at, up at the top there. It will, it will say 5G and then you'll have stacked letters U above a W to represent ultra wideband, hmm. real 5G. And of course, or you can just watch the video with Chris Rock, in which case... He'll tell you 5G just got real. And that's his sure way of saying there's a difference between Verizon oh. and everybody else. I'm Chris Rock. Oh, it's not about me. I get it. Yeah. No, no, no. Zoom in on it. The new iPhone. Oh, you're talking about copyright? Oh, yeah, cut it. Kill it. Oh. Anyway, he, he goes over gaming, uh, watching the NFL on 19 different streams and downloading an entire album in like two seconds. And he does it in the Chris, Chris Rock kind of way. And of course, he cashes a check on this. So shout out to Chris Rock. It also, I don't know where they filmed this. Is this his place? He has a mini football field, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if it's his place. Or they set it up. But uh, anyways, there's a different way in which this is handled on Android. Or on uh, Android would say 5G UWB would be their logo. They just handle it a little bit differently, but they're going to let you know when you have the real 5G versus not. Now, depending on the success probably of this latest iPhone, or, or, or maybe even regardless of the success, Verizon is rapidly attempting to roll out the real 5G mm. and they appear to have some sort of a head start. But just keep that in mind when you go out to purchase one of these, you, if you're not seeing that logo, you're not on the real heavy hitter 5G. Mm -hmm. That's the logo you're going to be looking for right there. Uh, this, was your, this was your story here, Will. iPhone 12 failed to address... Face ID problems in the age of the pandemic uh, with the masks. Yes. And, and it's another area where uh, you've been paying a lot of attention, doing a lot of research. Oh, uh, well, not really, no. I just read the headline a little bit. About That's all article. you did. You just read the headline, just like everybody else. And then decided to form my own hated opinion <laughs> as people do nowadays. Just started shouting at people? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what you do in 2020. Uh, look, people got their hopes up because we saw that iPad Air. The recent iPad Air had yeah. this nicely integrated, it hasn't shipped yet, but during the presentation, nicely integrated Touch ID. Mm -hmm. And everyone said, Touch ID's coming back. Mm -hmm. Awesome, because Face ID has been a wreck with the masks now. Yeah, and they could do it on the button. It's perfect. And they can do it on the button. Perfect. So uh, people got their hopes up. 
And anytime you get your hopes up, uh, you, you better get it slashed. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same thing goes with 120 hertz. People got their hopes up, mm -hmm. slashed. Because they had the, they've had now whatever they call pro motion on the iPads forever, and yes. they're in no rush to put it on the phone. That always, that kind of boggles me. On the iPad, they they marketed it. They talked about iPad Pro. I'm talking about. Yeah. Talked about it. We're committed to it. And then, but on the phone, everyone's like, "Yeah, we don't really need it." It's like, well, then why do it on the iPad? What if it has no merit whatsoever? Anyway, so people got their hopes up. But here's the thing, and of course, I read through the article over here, and they're not wrong. By the way, it would have been nice to have even just have both. Mm -hmm. Face ID and uh, in the power switch. Um, however, the product cycle on, a, on an iPhone is pretty long. I mean, it could be 18 months. They basically go to work. They're already working on the next one right mm -hmm. now. And so certain things may have been set in stone where just the design of the thing, they may have been lacking space for those components. And by the time the pandemic hit and they started to have to shift around their focus or start thinking about Touch ID, it wasn't enough time to get it integrated into mm -hmm. the whatever other work they had already done. That's what I assume. I don't think it's the death of Touch ID on the iPhone just because we didn't see it here. I think the future is Touch because of this whole situation, which is going to be with us for a while with the masks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I look at the new Pixel device sitting right here, the Pixel 5, and I'm using the rear fingerprint scanner, and they just ditched face altogether. There's no face unlock in this, and they had bet so hard on it mm. with the previous gen. Mm -hmm. They had the heavy-handed. They even had a, the radar in there. Yeah, the Solly chip. They were so into it, and then they're like, you know what? Touch is better. And given the current situation, the current climate, as some like to say, it's certainly feeling like touch is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And definitely, if you can have both, that's the ideal implementation so i think probably next gen iphone right we're going to get the touch inside of the power switch and it's going to be great mm -hmm. and people are going to love it so it's only a matter of time it's a little bit of a failure at the moment but it's only a matter of time now the next one apparently not a failure at all willie do getting called out by mashable really yeah they called you out by name oh. in the article if you do if you do a control f on the article you search willie do they called you out by name oh no I love Mashable. Don't do this to me. <laughs> well, Will had all the problems and the apprehension around the MagSafe wallet and his credit cards. And he still can lose them, but apparently they are not going to damage your uh, precious cards, mm. and your, your mag strips on your, on your precious cards. Uh, we have some news here that they are safe for both types of magnetic uh, cards whether it is low coercivity or high coercivity. High co, low co. Yeah, low I, mean, co. I, never, I never even read these terms. I never saw these terms prior to this article, but I'll tell you the difference right now. You have the cards in your wallet, which are your credit cards and things like this. And then you have the cards in your wallet you might have temporarily like to unlock the hotel room. Mm. You know how those ones suck all the time? Mm -hmm. Low co, those are low co. They are loco. Those, those are loco. Yeah. And 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 that's because I guess they're reprogrammable all the time, whatever else. Um, and they really don't have to be that robust because if you need to get a new one, you just go back to the lobby. Mm -hmm. You know how that works. Yep. Uh, anyway, they tested it against both. And here's the quote. The leather wallet is shielded, so it's safe for credit cards. The shield protects both low coercivity, high coercivity cards. Uh, a fancy way of saying resistant to being demagnetized. Um, so basically, they're saying you're safe. I don't know. You obviously want to test it further, Will, because you have your apprehensions. But they have put some type of shield in there. I believe it's, a, would it be an R, a, kind of like an RFID? Mm. Some kind of a shield, shielding material that's not going to allow that magnet to transfer its nasty juice to your cards, which you wouldn't want to have happen. Mm -hmm. Now, the question you have of the magnet or the wallet falling off is another thing we got to test coming out the yes. pocket day yep. in and day out but as we spoke about in the past neodymium is that the way you pronounce that neodymium anyway yeah. powerful magnets yes so you, you'll probably be okay and it's just it's amazing how this whole thing is shaping up i'm sitting here talking about magnets even more it's amazing how this whole thing's shaping up mm -hmm. it's perfect for apple yeah they're gonna sell you know 
what? How many iPhones? They're gonna sell millions of iPhones in five minutes. When, when as soon as the thing pre-order goes on, they sell millions of iPhones, and it's the hype is gonna be around things attaching to it with magnets. Yes. I mean, it's just perfect, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, because magnets don't cost thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. but it's just funny what works. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, of of purchasing that next iPhone, apparently 40% of Americans plan to reduce cell phone costs citing the coronavirus. What, okay, so so it's a little sensitive out there. Let me give you some figures here. 80% of Americans say they want to spend less on their next phone, according to a national representative survey conducted by Wallet, Wallet Hub. 36% say they are already looking to reduce the cost of their current one. I suppose this refers to their, their mobile plan as well. Uh, let me keep going. The unemployment rate is 7.9% in the U.S. Total credit card debt, nearly $1 trillion. So this is the type of stuff we're talking about with the smartphone pricing and cost sensitivity, the value play that many manufacturers are taking, going, going with lower starting prices. Uh, 63 million Americans have filed for government unemployment insurance since the lockdown began mid-March. Hmm. 63 million Americans. You got like 350. That's mm -hmm. a lot. That's a high percentage. Yeah. Going for the unemployment. So a lot of people are still not working and you're asking them to, to spend a grand on a phone. It's a tough proposition at the moment. Of course, Apple always has a way, don't they? Magnets. Magnets will overcome unemployment. Yes. <laughs> no, but you know what will? What? Have you see, ever seen them pushing payment plans as hard as they are right now? Mm hmm. They got payment plans on the accessories. Mm. They, the wallet we were just talking about. You can finance it. Yeah, 70 cents a month. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's actually it, but I'm telling you right now, you can finance everything on Apple's site. They're like, we have a response to, to your debt. More debt. $4.91 a month. Canadian. Is For it? Yeah, I think this is... Are you, I don't think... I think you're on the oh, U.S. Oh, this is U.S.? Oh, okay. I think you're on the U.S. site right now. It, like, for the 59, go to a cheaper case, because there's cheaper ones than 59. Go to... Oh, there aren't cheap ones. Go to the MagSafe charger. It's 39. That's $3.25 a month. <laughs> Man, I never thought I would see Apple doing that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy. But they're also trying to sell you the Apple card at the same moment. Right. Which right. is right underneath there, where it's telling you to buy it. Can you finance the forty-nine dollar Beats Flex headphones? You can't. Eight dollars. They'll finance everything right now. Mm -hmm. So this, I believe, this is gonna gonna act as a uh, what would you say a kind of uh, co coercive element to people who are a little cash cash strapped at the moment. Yes, they could just say, well, it's. Look at that, honey. It's only three bucks a month. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, you know what? Get yourself a MagSafe know, charger. So cheap. <laughs> so I guess that's how they're going to work their way around that. And the other cool part of this survey, even though 40% of Americans are planning to reduce their phone costs, one in three people still plan to buy the new iPhone this year. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. So some people really want to cut back. Others are like, Nah, I'm so depressed with this lockdown. I need a new iPhone. Leave me alone. Mm. I need a new blue iPhone. It's very important for my sanity and a wallet that snaps to the back. So, Speaking of a thing that it appears that people will buy regardless of their uh, current state of employment, the PlayStation 5 has mm. so much attention. People are getting hyped about, well, anything that comes out about it. And uh, just recently here, we have a glimpse into the UI. Mm. And it's actually quite a comprehensive video. It's 11 minutes and 35 seconds. It is on the actual PlayStation account. So it's an official kind of walkthrough, not, not an end user or a, a influencer or anything like that. It's from PlayStation. They, uh, they showcase kind of like a card system for navigation. And the whole emphasis here is apparently around, well, speed for one and not leaving the game. So the game is always ready to go, even as you interact with UI elements or think about doing something else. You go to read, see how the game is still on in the background. Yeah, and uh, they ha they also had picture in picture for some reason, mm. which was kind of cool. I thought that was uh, interesting. 
Yeah, and towards so you can watch your friends play. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that part. That is cool. The uh, if you go towards the end, there's an interesting uh, piece about a game or a piece of media. Yeah, around here, every game or piece of media is going to have its own dedicated page like that. So it will completely mm -hmm. change the look when you're when you're hovering it of the whole interface. And and they also made the top icons a little bit smaller, and there's more negative space. Right. By the looks of it, compared to the to the PlayStation Four UI, but it's—I it, mean, I'm going to be honest—it's pretty similar. You're scrolling left to right for most, and you still have on the left hand side. You still pop up that kind of sub menu thing in the box on the left hand side. So it's kind of similar, but I thought it was interesting. I think anyone who is uh, considering purchasing the next gen console might as well take a look at it because you you'll, you will be living within this interface very very soon. Mm -hmm. But I think there is kind of a uh, uh, a merging of UIs in the game console world because the Xbox Series X is kind of similar. Yeah, they, they have kind of like a card system. They moved well. away. Uh, they moved away more so from what they had earlier, and now they're kind of meeting somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And and it's going to be a card. It's going to be a left right. It's going to be a card. And but it's cool because actually this nav menu here it shows in in game specific things too. It shows. Uh, different challenges and things in the title that you're already in mm -hmm. inside of that ui this is cool yeah this is the part i was talking about oh maybe not i think he backs out of this particular game and talks about the custom full page splash page for each game which will be unique as well anyway you can go check it out for yourself it's completely rebuilt it's rebuilt around speed to bring a truly next gen experience obviously everything's been rezzed up as well uh, according to PlayStation, here's the quote, we believe the less time you spend waiting to interact with the system, the more time you will have to spend playing games. Hmm. Which uh, I don't think anyone's going to be mad at that. Mm -hmm. So go check that out. Here's an interesting development. You know, we talked about the GameStop Microsoft situation where we couldn't figure out why are they signing this deal? What is this deal about? They're going to use Microsoft uh, Surface products in the store. They're going to use the Microsoft backend for meetings and business related things. I'm like, what's the big deal with that? Why? What's the incentive? Look at this report. Microsoft will share digital revenues with GameStop on every Xbox it sells. Hmm. So they get a percentage? Of, of, of any, from the point at which the person buys the Xbox from them, all spending they do digitally afterwards, they get a percentage. Huh. That is big business. Yeah. How did they cut a deal with that like my, uh, with Microsoft? What did Did it does is their footprint big enough, their influence big enough that this could be meaningful to Microsoft? Because here's the thing. Let's say I got a GameStop, right? And I can a person comes in the store or goes on a website and they want a next gen console. And I got two consoles. I got the Xbox. I got the PlayStation. I can sell you the Xbox and take a piece of everything you ever do on it. Small piece. Yeah. I could sell you the PlayStation and bye bye, good night, whatever margin I get on the purchase, and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Which one am I going to sell you? Well, yeah, the Xbox for sure. But how much is this percentage here? I don't think it needs to be big. No. No, because... You think about the person spending over the course of a console, if they get the digital only, hmm. it's much bigger than the console itself. Mm -hmm. So anyway, like it, this is not to say that I know that there's no similar deal with Sony or something like that. No, I'm, I'm not sure how those relationships exist, but GameStop is one of these places where it is the console battleground where you can buy either. It's not the company's own website. Mm -hmm. This is the place where you could get talked into one over the other. Mm -hmm. And so maybe Microsoft said, look, we don't have to do this. We want people to buy di direct. But if they find themselves in a GameStop, we want to make sure that the games that GameStop has more incentive to sell our program than theirs. That's the only way I can imagine there's enough leverage on a GameStop side to cut a deal like this. Yeah. Well, you were, you, you were talking about how employees were having a surface laptops or uh, tablets and stuff right? that's right <laughs> imagine it's like the whole branding it's just microsoft that's what i'm saying stop it that, could happen listen 
I'm saying, man, it's they're moving in that direction. Yeah. Now, obviously, they're going to have the Sony stuff as it stands right now, but the initial deal, I was skeptical. I felt like pieces were missing as to what exactly did these parties gain out of that. I guess Microsoft gets a big customer on the corporate side with the back-end stuff, and I assume that these contracts cost money, mm -hmm. but then I was thinking, well, what does GameStop get out of it just by using Surface products? It's not really that big. Maybe this is what they get out of it. Right. Yeah. And, and both parties get to work together to compete against Sony. That's the way it sounds on paper. I'm not saying I don't know. Well, GameStop's been having all kinds of difficulties. This could be a nice little boost for them. Mm -hmm. A nice little boost for them, and it could be one of the many nodes in the in the wild battlefield that these different consoles have to go out there and, and battle in. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of interesting to me, but again, there's probably nothing stopping Sony from cutting a similar deal with a different retailer. Right. Right? Best Buy, let's say. Best Buy, yeah. Yeah, so... I'm not sure if they will or won't, but it's interesting. Mm -hmm. OnePlus has ditched Facebook bloatware on the 8T and future phones. They got backlash. I don't know if you remember, we covered this. OnePlus 8, OnePlus 8 Pro, they came with the Facebook stuff pre-installed. It mm -hmm. was a deal that OnePlus made with Facebook for the pre-install, and I'm sure they got paid for it handsomely. Mm -hmm. You know, Facebook, they, they love an install here and there. Mm -hmm. They, they love a user here and there. Yes. And so I guess they got a few with those devices, but then people, they went on a, you know, OnePlus has a has a pretty robust communication with their users and their, and their uh, community. And they were hearing from the community, no thank you. Mm. No thank you to the bloat. And in fact, it was one of the things with OnePlus as far as having a really quick and, and simple user experience. Like removing bloat, removing animations, it's kind of part of the DNA. Mm. So it felt weird to have this extra stuff that kind of wasn't part of the DNA of the company. Yeah. Uh, I'm using the Pixel right now, right? And vanilla Android. It's a vanilla experience. Yes. Uh, if there's a big Facebook logo, I'd be like, no. Google can put whatever they want. Yeah. It's their OS. Mm -hmm. But if there's a big Facebook logo, that's me scratching my temple, hmm. by the way. So anyway, they, they backtracked, and I like that, Well, I don't mind the backtrack. I'm not the guy that sits there and goes, told you so. I don't think it's any good to that. Yeah. You want to encourage companies, people, to make changes if you don't appreciate something. That means they're responsive. It means they care. It means they're listening. It means your input matters. Yeah, that's OnePlus's track record, right? They listen to their customers. They listen up. Yeah. So I don't get mad at it. I don't say told you so, and I don't think it's useful in most cases to do that. Of course, uh, you know, a track record can go way off course, but in OnePlus's case, it, this is kind of a, an aberration. It was a, an unusual move. Maybe they thought nobody was going to notice, but they listened to the customers and they got rid of it and they said, okay, not on the AT and not for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. on uh, these type of installs. So that probably goes for Facebook. It probably goes for other apps as well that may make a similar request and may offer boatloads of money for boatloads of bloatware. Mm -hmm. All right, last one for me. I got a prototype to blow your mind. How about this? You know where these prototypes come from. It always got to be Oppo, Vivo. Always got to be one of those players <laughs> Yeah. that bring the crazy stuff. Because yeah. they're just, you know, they're they're kind of hardware first and they're they're they they're just rapidly it's a rapid process over there of prototyping new ideas and drawing up new things and anyway that's what we have today today we have a prototype of a smartphone with a removable camera mm. and you look at this this whole thing pops off apparently allowing you to uh, get perspectives that you wouldn't be able to with the phone itself oh i mean that's a little look at that little spy camera you should put that thing anywhere yeah, Looks and like a character. You know what's weird is I thought about it in two ways. I thought, yeah. first off, okay, it's cool that it comes off. Second off, if you had the camera out on the pop-up style on the top and you dropped it, it would just, it could resist because it would just pop off mm. as opposed to snapping or something yeah. Yeah. Be, becoming useless. So what I assume is that that's some kind of magnetic connector getting back to magnets because we can't seem to escape them. 
that looks like a magnetic connector at the top that attaches the camera. And what's unique here is the camera, which is detachable, is also housed inside the phone itself. So you have a motor, a magnet, and a detachable camera. Huh. That's a lot to take in. Yeah. And if you look at the shape of it, it looks to me like it could be pointed in either direction. Hmm. Forward facing or rear facing. So you would have your best camera module facing either way. Hmm. Anyway, this is just a prototype right now. They they won a red dot award, which is what happens whenever whenever you design anything. Innovation? Yeah. You design something and the red dot guys, they in, immediately, you just have a drawing, they knock on your door. Uh. They never miss those red dot guys. No. I remember as long as I've been going to CES in Vegas, I'd be looking at the red dot. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> yes, let's just shoot a video over there. Yeah. With these guys. Yeah, I had a I had a I would go to a glass case and it would be like red dot design award. Mm. Like, wow. I got to pay attention to that. So these guys they never miss a weird thing. Uh it equips smartphones with a detachable front camera. And uh, where, where, what do they say here? The placement of the camera above the top of the phone was done to increase the amount of space someone would have to properly grip the phone without compromising visual stability. And uh, apparently it's going to have, it's going to connect similar to an S Pen. So I actually don't know if it would be motorized or if it would just be one of those click, click stop things where you would click it in. Yeah. And it would, I don't know how they would, it would kind of be terrifying if it was just a click. Yeah. yeah. A, a little bit terrifying. Uh, by separating the camera from the phone, the idea is that the design would enhance user-friendly shooting features that are normally constrained within the design of a mobile device. I don't know. Maybe you place that thing all over the place. You get super creative. You might get yourself your own red dot mm. just from using the camera. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's how red dot works, though. No. Uh, 